Speaking of age, how to, uh, uh, how does the Gwar show? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you mentioned. I don't know how the, the actual band Gwar was because I drank too much and I didn't see them. I just left, you know, which yeah. is something that drunk drunkards do. I, you know, I stopped drinking hard liquor a while ago and then, uh, you know, I just switched to red wine. You know, yep. my doctor said that I could drink red wine, so I don't, he didn't really specify quantity. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I'm at Guar and I thought, oh, you know, I'll just drink like I used to that I'm, I'm at Guar. Right? It's I'm, yeah. I'm exempt. Right. And right. You know, there's, I forgot how evil brown liquor is. It's just like, I'm feeling nothing. I'm feeling nothing. I'm, I'm hammered, oh, hammered, yeah. <laughs> totally hammered. And like it, yeah, I didn't make a total ass of myself. I probably, you know, was was a little bit too familiar with my buddy who's not into that kind of shit, you know, right. but uh, I didn't touch him inappropriately. Or anything. <laughs> well, but, I guess that's a, that's a plus. Yeah, yeah. It's, a good, it's good you see a little silver lining at least. Yeah, yeah. But I woke up in the morning like, why do I feel so mired in shame? Why don't I remember... <laughs> anything about like i remember everything about the opening band but why don't i remember seeing guar because i didn't see them i paid money to go down there to eat to park and i yep. didn't see the band so i don't know well i have to were. say i i've been there my myself good sir and uh yeah it's not a pleasant feeling i think it's uh, -uh. uh i think it's the sense of shame thing that it really is. that really kick kicks you in the ass you know the drinking part yeah. is uh, whatever but when you think about oh did i do or say anything when i was in that state you know you just don't know well i mean i wasn't blackout drunk i was just okay. like i just i was stumbling around and I, I i knew i was way too drunk and i i don't know why i do this i go through if i go to a concert alone i it's an internal thing to where i'm just like you know, oh, the band's two songs in. I could leave now. I could totally leave and go home. I don't know why I have this feeling, but when I've done it too, I've done it too. But when I'm totally drunk with a, a friend that's just totally, you know, the nicest guy in the world that'll be like, Oh, you want to go home? Let's go home. And he yeah. wasn't gonna be like, Are you fucking out of your mind? You came here to see this band. No, it's like I'll drive you home. And then next thing I wake up and I haven't seen the band. So it's, yeah, I, I, it, two days of just self-hatred. But I, oh, I got through it. I got through it. I'm glad you got you got through it. And But did, you saw X-Cops though, right? Saw X-Cops. That was fun. I saw um, uh, Cancer Christ. That was entertaining. They were, um, they're an entertaining band for sure. You saw them? Yeah. 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 They were a good time. Um, a negative Approach, I think, was, was playing. Oh, yeah. Yep. I've heard of him. Eh, not a fan, but yeah, you know, no offense. Um, and then you know, I'm sure Guar played a lot of cool Guar songs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I've been there, done that. Uh, I was just curious about because you, you when you told me the X Cops was opening up, you know the what, now did you go to see that Guar concert with me when I still lived in Florida and the X Cops opened up back then? No, I didn't. I, this is this is the first time that I've seen any iteration of X Cops. So. Um, what was cool about it is Pete Lee was playing guitar with them again. You know, Pete Lee, who was um, who played the one of the many Flatus Maximuses, but he was, um, you know, one of their more beloved iterations of Flatus Maximus. He's the guy that was in the car with War when they got uh, when when um, there was Virginia. a shoot and he got shot. Oh he got, shit! Yeah, he got shot with the band. They had to take out a big chunk of his colon. And he went through all sorts of health problems, but he's the, he seems like one of the funniest dudes is Texan dude, just really yeah. thick accent, just really seems real affable and funny. Um, he was, he was in the band. So he was playing, you know, like obviously Dave Brocky wasn't there to reprise his role as the, right. uh, as, as the Nazi cop basis. So it was some, <laughs> they, un, they kind of underwrote that whole character. They didn't do his right. song. He was just, they just some stand in bass guy. Yeah. And the shtick with the drummer was it was some guy on death row that they uh, put this old Sparky to at the end of the show. And he's like being <laughs> ele electrocuted while he's playing drums. So that, it was funny. You know, it was, uh, you know, it, That's it, it wasn't good. Yeah. I, li uh, I like that. I remember seeing X Cops, you know, back in the day and just being like, we were just, I don't know if I was there with Morgan. Uh, I probably was there with Morgan, but uh, we were yeah. just uh, amazed. We're like, oh, that's fucking, you know, this is Gore, but in another yeah. 
iteration thing. Yeah, they just they just switched roles and costumes, and they they did the same thing. They even made timely jokes like, "Wow, this song sure didn't age well." And... <laughs> yeah, uh, such such good times with that stuff. Well, yeah, uh, I appreciate you sharing that story. No problem. And uh, guys, we've been talking, but this is cinematic suffering, and this is our bits and chunks episode. Welcome, welcome. And Click are, like, subscribe. If you're uh, you're listening to this on uh, your favorite podcasting platform, make sure to leave a five star review. Hooray! We five! did it! Woo! <laughs> Only forty five minutes in, six minutes and twenty three seconds. We can start cursing now because the uh, YouTube algorithm won't demonetize us. Right, right. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, uh, guys. We usually get together for bits and chunks uh, when we don't have really a specific topic, uh, like a, a movie review or a, a sit down to watch through or anything like that. We just like to talk about, you know, things we've done and things we've watched that you know are somewhat metal and horror oriented. They all kind of intersect, yeah, a little bit. But uh, Clay, uh, you went to you went to that show. I went to on Saturday. I went to go see. Uh, Claudio Simonetti's Go- Goblin, and they oh. were they were performing the so they showed the movie Demons, and then they played the entire soundtrack while the movie was playing. So it was in real time. Oh, and, excellent, dude! And these musicians are amazing musicians that are there. I mean, the bass player. There was only four members: bass player. I don't know their names. The bass player, drummer, and uh, lead guitarist. And then Claudio is on the keyboards and doing all the cool. Uh, italian horror soundtrack stuff and cool and they they knocked it out of the park they did cover i mean because in the movie demons uh there's songs from saxon except uh iron maiden and they did they didn't cover the the fa- they didn't cover except fast as the shark fast as a shark song which is odd but they played yeah. the maiden tune two times in the actual uh and they're when they're recording it or when they're playing it so but they did a great job it was um flash of the blade I think oh that, okay yeah I, th- I if that's off a of power slave i think um pretty sure yeah, it's that, power slave. that's that's awesome dude i bet that was a blast yeah and then they had uh then i thought they were just gonna do like the soundtrack stuff and that was the end but afterwards they played like another hour set of just classic they played like the the soundtrack from dawn of the dead a lot of these that have have been meddled up truly had had been meddled up and some of them were their original format but they kind of rearranged some things so it was really cool they played uh they played a reimagining reworked version of tubular bells from the exorcist that classic theme yeah halloween the halloween theme they they meddled the hell out of it and yeah so that was really a a fantastic night of horror and music and i'm so glad and then then the wife and i we're, we're my wife and i are celebrating our seventh anniversary Congrats. seventh marriage anniversary so, yeah thank you so much it was just last night but it's been a whole weekend four or five days of just consistent doing the like, consistently doing a lot of cool stuff you know this entire time so that's great that's great well and it works out because y'all like really enjoy a lot of the same stuff in that way you yeah know? like uh you know can, my girl and i like she doesn't really enjoy going to the concerts so i just kind of either go with a friend or i go alone so yeah guar is in the, the like is stuff that i do not want to subject to somebody that's not <laughs> into it right it's like that old meme of I don't know if it's like this old meme, but it, I don't know why I just even thought of it. But you you see like, oh, oh, you talk to a person or a person you just met and they're like, oh, I like all kinds of music. And they go, oh, yeah. And then you blast your bet favorite death metal album at full blast, you know, and they're like, OK, yeah. maybe not all kinds of music. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And you could play like the the 20th down on the list of severity and they'd still be like, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, it's like you, you <laughs> soft. That's why. Right. Yeah. And then. uh and then on Sunday, we were planning to go to this uh, drag show, this Halloween drag show at this place called Hamburger Mary's here. And uh, everything was sold out. We couldn't get in. So at the last minute, we saw Cradle of Filth was playing just right down the road. Wow. And I think this, yeah. And I think I'd messaged you. I was like, hey, shit, we're just going to go see. I knew you were out going to see Gore that night, right? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Then, and then I was like, damn, we're going to show too. So we went and saw Cradle of Filth and Devil Driver. I'm not a, I'm not 
a huge fan of Double Driver, but it was entertaining. And oh, I I, I forgot that they got. Is it is Daz Daz Cavalera still in the band? Yeah, yeah, he's still yeah. fronting it and everything. But uh, did they uh, do they still have eighteen guitarists in the band? <laughs> no, no, no. They just have the they just have the two. Uh, okay, was they, when I saw them that I think they had like it was a long time ago, but they had like four guitarists or something. It was like I can't hear four guitarists coming out no. of the street. No, it's like Maiden with the uh, they've got their third guitarist and the way they utilize them, it's just uh, well, why don't you put more rhythm in the back or something? Or yeah, like you know, those guitar harmonies or something. But you know. <laughs> I just I don't think Steve Harris felt good about firing him. It just didn't seem right. So I thought I was I always thought the same thing, dude. I always thought the <laughs> same thing. They've had they had this guy Yannick. They brought him in, and all of a sudden Adrian Smith wants to come back, Bruce Dickinson, and then you know they probably are like. They took off their hats and they're like, uh, Yannick, we have some good news and some bad news. <laughs> You're and still in Maiden, kind of. Maiden looks at him with a, or Yannick looks at him with his puppy dog eyes and says, What could you possibly want to tell me, fellas? <laughs> we've been playing for so long, for 15 years. And, <laughs> and so I, don't, I think they came back and they're like, nothing hey adrian smith's coming back and we're gonna keep you in the band yay yeah <laughs> everyone wins I, I was reading uh bruce or actually listening to um the audiobook of bruce dickinson's autobiography he's probably got several by now but he yeah. mentioned that whole time and it was it was just almost like not even a paragraph where he just <laughs> how it went down and i was like uh-huh that's no <laughs> No more conversation or contractual obligations or lawyers, nothing like that involved, guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I always, uh, I've, I, I always would like watch, you know, YouTube videos or read uh, excerpts from books or something about what, what happened back then. And it's, it's usually been kind of inconsistent, even though there's, there are some consistencies in the story. But then there's, you know, everyone's got their own version of what. Really yeah, happened. yeah. I'm just I mean, back. I I sure like you know, and you got to see it live. I uh, several times. I I sure enjoy watching him play with the band, and I he's obviously an insanely good guitarist. Oh so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Props to Yannick uh, for sticking it out and not being kicked out of Maiden. I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's like yep yeah, for being the 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 fifth Maiden member. <laughs> uh, well, uh, did you have you seen or watched anything that? Uh, well, you, you? Um, I like I, there was one that uh, my partner wanted to get called The Damned. It's an old horror, um, uh, old Hammer movie that I ended up really liking. And I, you know, like I know you haven't seen it, so I don't want to spend too much time talking about it. But I can really recommend that one. That was a really interesting movie. It came out okay. like a good decade before. Um, uh, you know, Clockwork Orange, but it's got oh, okay. oddly a lot of the same themes. It's a, you know, it's like a whole decade earlier, so it's right. a, a little bit more zany and upbeat. And there's not any of the really obvious horrible themes, but <laughs> a lot of it's it almost seems like wow, did one movie know about the other? It's it, it right. Was, it was. Or if Cooper yeah. took some inspiration from it or something, you know, or possibly, yeah, ruffians doing ruffian type stuff in a in in a, a weird um, kind of relationship that that pops up around, you know, between one of the gang members' sisters and the dude that they're harassing, and yeah. it just goes into weirdoville where they <laughs> they end up finding this uh, like underground bunker full of kids that are radioactive to the touch and then they all start getting sick it's a incredibly weird film there's some oh, wow. really good performances probably one of those uh it's kind of like um <clears throat> the cold war era kind of movies you know you know where they are trying to get some kind of weird uh anti uh, war anti-nuclear message or something probably but it's it, if that was <laughs> if that was the intent it, it it didn't come through but i still enjoyed it you know it, it i yeah like i didn't feel a real strong anti you know war thing we i should have been more compelled that like it, it should have been a little bit more compelling that the uh they were scientists keeping these kids underground and you know keeping them away from everybody but it seemed like no that's the thing to do you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should keep them underground. It's very good. <laughs> they're they're very very radioactive, but yeah, it was it was a that one was good. It was one of the many 
uh, worthwhile uh, Hammer films to, to yeah. add to the collection. Oh, it was a Hammer one. Yep. Yep. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Right. I just added it to my list here. So I definitely want to check it out. I don't know. Kind of spurred me on about uh, a subject that I wanted to pick your brain about. Uh, a friend of mine posted recently that he's tired of these high minded horror films and he just wants to see blood and gore and stop trying to teach us a lesson kind of deal. And uh, I always thought that was weird because I think all horror movies have some kind of message behind them, even if it's a nihilistic uh, message that, you know, even Friday the 13th has some kind of odd message behind it. And uh, I, don't, I just don't think you can get away with a movie that doesn't have some kind of message, you know. Um, I, I kind of know what, you know, I don't want to assume that I know what he's talking about having not read what he said, but a lot of times I've noticed in cases like this, that, uh, that kind of, you have to dig into the, to, to the meat and bone of what people are talking about. Cause a lot of times they're not very articulate about the way they say it. And they come out just sounded like, it's too good, woke crap. <laughs> and it makes them sound like they hate things with gay people and stuff like that in it. Not yeah. that that's the case, but I, what he is probably trying to say is that I don't well, want like being condescended to. Yeah. Uh, here's his exact, here's the exact quote. Okay. Uh, I can't, I can't stand the, he put in quotes, elevated horror genre. It's snobby, pretentious bullshit that puts me to sleep. <laughs> Blood guts and high body count, please. Um, I, I you know, like it's it's not an either or proposition i guess would be my immediate thing there's there's yeah. there's enough space it's it's kind of like when you know people like total respect to him but when somebody like martin scorsese uh craps all over marvel movies which i think are are garbage let me kind of <laughs> <laughs> sidebar to that but yeah. I, you know my genuine feeling is is that there's a more than enough room in the world of movies for everything for, yeah. for things that are high minded and for, you know, what I consider to be just, you know, kind of like very ca cotton candy entertainment of Marvel movies, but that's fine. If you like them, go enjoy them. I, you know, like I, I don't get too much out of, them. but um, you know, I, I, I like to see both. I like um, when it comes to the kind of movies that, that this person, you know, is talking about that have, just ex just an, an absurd amount of violence the things that that just deeply upset like film critics back in the day yeah. they just couldn't wait to just pontificate remember like siskel and ebert would just spend half an hour talking about how bad a movie was yeah, and yeah. you shouldn't see it like well you guys are talking well, about familiar. it <laughs> it does really you know, but just excoriated as trash filth as class of Newcom high it should just be right. you know burnt at the pyre um I, you know like i think i definitely like horror movies like that that just have nudity for the sake of nudity and for and you can tell that they're just there to be irreverent and to be as uh kind of counterculture as you could get right yeah no i i definitely agree with that um i i i think when i when i think of pretentious movies i think this person is probably mainly going for a24 and there's yeah. their their film uh biography or discography or whatever we want to call it filmography that's what you can call it um and i i agree there are some probably some films in that category that their filmography that are a little pretentious and high minded but uh, at the same time they've knocked out the park some really good ones and the, when you i when i think of combining uh, a good gore fest and you want to get some high minded ideals in there look at uh uh, Cronenberg's son, uh, uh, yeah, his films, uh, Possessor and Infinity Pool, are ha very high-minded takes. They're sexualized and, but they're, yeah. but they're highly violent and gory, and but they still have this message that comes through about them. That you know, some of it's pretty obvious, like Infinity Pool. I don't know, have you seen Infinity? No, Pool? and I've been meaning okay. to because I was so like enamored with Possessor that I'm surprised I didn't see Infinity Pool by now. Right. I feel bad about not having seen. Yeah, I will totally recommend it to you. I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but uh, th there's an overarching theme that 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 is uh, present in the film about you know the haves and the have-nots. Yeah, and it's 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 really prevalent, and the way he pulls it for even though possessor is probably the better film infinity pool has the kind of like a deeper 
feeling or meaning I think about it. Um, yeah. There's a, and another thing I like about Possessor and Infinity Pool, it, it presents technology, the technology in those films as just, this is the technology, accept it. Even though we know what was happening in Possessor could never happen. Yeah. It's something that, that is normal in that movie with this, organization and the same thing with infinity infinity pool has this technology in it that it's bonkers shit crazy but it fits well with the narrative of the story and your disbelief is well suspended yeah i don't know if that kind of creativity that if any of that that kind of creativity gets passed in our genetics i think that it does on a certain level because uh you know my mom like my mom and my dad both they they didn't make a living as as artists, but my dad loved typography. He had a real deep love for typography, and my mom uh, loved writing. And you know, like that. And I got the art gene. I think that, at least in some kind of ways, I got it from them. In the case of Cronenberg, I'm almost more excited about what uh, Brandon Cron. That's his name, right? Brandon Cronenberg. Yeah, yeah, Brandon. That- I can figure the his name <laughs> is is going to get up to you know almost even more than his dad. And I love a lot of of his dad's movies. But, oh yeah, man, Possessor. That was his first feature film, I think, and that was it was amazing. It was like you yeah. know one of the best horror movies that I'd seen in a while. I remember being really excited to see it, and it was one of those movies that um, it was totally riveting while I was watching it, and it stuck with me afterwards. There was something about it that was just so compelling and just horrific about you know that this whole idea of of taking away somebody's autonomy like that yeah that, that was that just really sticks with you yeah it, it, it was a and again going back to the original subject uh it was it's a it's a high-minded um it's a high-minded some may call it pretentious uh outlook or view but it, it, it comes off visceral and yeah. and and it hits you. It hits you really hard if you're really paying attention to the movie and you watch everything that's happening. That you're just trying to place yourself in the in the character of the guy who just murdered his father and well, not his father-in-law. I guess his girl, her girlfriend's his girlfriend's father, and her. You know, and yeah. then he has to come out of it. You know, and no no idea what's going on. You know, and it, it was such. It's it, it turned like it was a thriller. It was a, a suspense. It was a horror. It was a sci-fi movie kind of like all this stuff just combined into one and that's what i loved about it well and there's there's a lot of stuff at play here from you know like for me i think what when i get annoyed when i turn into that guy and i complain about those things is when i feel like i'm being um condescended to and preached to and and when there's this really heavy-handed morality message that's yeah. pushed at me in a very um kind of infantile way like it's like getting condescended to by a child or something. A lot of the, a lot of these films, that's kind of how I feel. It's like you can tell that it's a somebody's first or or maybe their second, but usually their first film, and they're you know not that experienced of a filmmaker, and they're trying to push this really big agenda on you, and it's like just it's getting in the way of the narrative, and that's just yeah. bad storytelling. So I you know like I can see how that would be annoying, but if a film has nothing behind it that's compelling aside from just trying to bombard you with gore. We've seen it. And it's like, yeah. and if it does it so well to where you're just almost watching this simulated snuff movie, I kind of question if it's got that much value as a piece of art anyway. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. Uh, even though I, I enjoy, I enjoy the gore fest films. Now I, I think you probably like them a little bit more than I do. Um, depends on the film yeah i i know you recommended some pretty pretty heavy s- not slasher but gore filled flicks that you know i i'll I, i'll probably see them but i'm not sure <laughs> when kind of thing um so so to me it's like i like i like my gore presented in either a campy fashion where we're talking like you know friday yeah. the 13th the slasher kind of stuff or again in those high-minded uh, you know pretentious films where it's used to great effect um, when it's done for just the for the the I guess gore porn that you know it's it's not all me you know <laughs> it's not my thing yeah. but I'm certainly not going to judge another person if they want to if that's what they prefer over you know like the witch or hereditary if they want to watch 
uh, a trauma film that's just nothing but heads being slashed, <laughs> spash in or whatever. You know, it's fine. I, you know, I guess it depends on like you know, I've I've, I've talked about Adam Chaplin enough for a lifetime, but but what that was one of those movies. What originally captivated me was the real over the top, you know, gratuitous yeah. splashes of gore. But when I was watching it, I was like, God, this is the music for one thing was just amazing. It had, I, I think it might've been Perturbator that did the, the soundtrack of that. Oh, really? Apologies if I'm wrong. If it wasn't Perturbator, it's, it's definitely somebody that's, that's kind of good at the same thing. I think it yeah. was Perturbator, but I'm, I'm too, I'm not going to look it up right now, but right, yeah. um, love the soundtrack, love the way it was presented, you know, and, uh, and, and the way that the story builds shows a real, uh, you know, kind of competency towards, you know, good storytelling. It's, it's still, you know, the filmmaker is still kind of in his infancy and I think he's probably going to get better. Yeah. Uh, some of his other stuff, I, it, I can't really get through as well. It's just too, it's a little bit too much, but I like that one. Um, so I, I'm with you. It's got to have something compelling to bring you through it. It's got to be a little bit more high minded than just yeah. like, eh, look what I can do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think of um, I think of like Green Inferno and how fucking gory that was. But, you know, the, it, but it was a it, it's obviously a homage to Cannibal Holocaust. But, you know, the I the over the top gore in that was crazy good. And I that's a movie I enjoyed the hell out of, you know, and it was pulled Definitely off. Definitely well. Eli Roth joint through and through. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So, you know, when it's used in that fashion, you know, and I we've I think we've talked about it before in the past, you know, with Cannibal Holocaust. It's a classic movie, but the uncut version just is just nauseating because the, the the with a real animal deaths. And I, I prefer not to yeah, watch that version. And that's um, and, and that's definitely my line. Like when I'm watching, um, it, you know, like I've been watching the uh, In Search of Darkness documentaries and those are fun because you can watch them a little bit at a time, you know, just yeah. the way they're structured because uh, the, they they go kind of down the line and they talk about each movie and so you it's nice clean segments that you can just hit yeah. stop on um but those like i don't even like watching the lead up to they don't show any of the animal deaths but they'll show the lead up to it and yeah. i find that just as upsetting almost as if they actually showed like i really have a, a a real visceral moral issue with with animals being used in that way i don't yeah. i don't i don't really care if you know, like, oh, we were going to eat it later. It's like, that's not okay still, you know, but. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and then, uh, you know, I think of like, an, I think of Friday the 13th, the first movie. Yeah, uh, they kill a snake they, in that they, one. They, they kill a snake. And I, I tell you, man, I hate snakes. I fucking hate them. I cannot <laughs> be near them. I have like this intense phobia against snakes. That said, I don't want to see them killed. I don't want yeah. to see them, you know, trapped and murdered and, you know, I don't know if you call killing a snake murder, but you know what I'm saying. That, yeah, yeah. That, but I certainly don't want to, I don't want them to die. I don't want them, I don't want them around me, but I don't want them dead. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so that's always the, I remember, you know, you know, watching that in the first Friday the 13th and how, you know, that part hit me viscerally more than anything else in that movie because they, they just, actually killed that poor snake. Yeah. And it's so, it's, it's so unnecessary and it's so inappropriate. It's just wildly um, inappropriate, you know, like, I, and I can understand why people uh, get irritated at, at groups like, like PETA. I'm definitely not trying to go down that road, but I'm, I'm glad that that kind of thing has, has become kind of unacceptable in culture. Yeah. Like if part of the reason that we like horror is that we're trying to face our fears, laugh at them, diminish them in a way that's, that's, um, you know, in the, at the end of the day, I think, you know, positive and, and healthy and it's, and you're kind of working against that. If you know that something morally reprehensible was done in order to make, this movie that's pretty dumb objectively a lot right. of the time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. 100%. Um, so do we want to touch on maybe end this off with a uh, uh, VHS 85? Um, yeah, we could talk about that real quick. I don't want to, you know, take up too much of everybody's time, but you recommended VHS uh, 85 and, and I really enjoyed that one. I'd watched a couple yeah. of the other ones and I found 85 to be like entertaining through and through beginning to end, which is a real kind of an achievement for uh, 
a, a one of these um what do you call them like not a montage but a uh, uh anthology, uh, anthology, an anthology yeah. film yeah. yeah i really enjoyed it yeah that was um one of those things because I, I i love the first one um i thought the first one has some great stories in it and uh the second one i i was a little off on and the third one i i don't even remember the third to be honest with you and i haven't seen any of the others i think there's maybe two more one or I two think- more I think that's correct. I've I've seen the first two, and then I've seen this one. Okay. Um, and and I I feel pretty much the same way. I thought that that the first one had some real bangers in it, and then the second one was very uneven. The second one was almost the creep show two of the series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, VHS eighty five. Uh, I I there was you know the here's my thinking behind behind it was that the. There's one story in there when they're introducing uh, early VA uh, virtual reality. Yeah. Uh, that virtual reality story where I was just like, when it started, I was like, oh my God, you know, and it just kind of, it was like one of those things that's very slow. It's a slow, short story. And I was like, oh God, this is, this is dumb. You know, can we just <laughs> move on? And then the end of that, that segment is brutal. It's brutal. Yeah. As hell. And oh, well. I liked that. I liked how it, it just totally got me over that hump and i'm like okay this was worth the wait for sure definitely um, I, I thought the 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 story of the lake and uh the dinner party guests were was above all the most excellent pieces of horror written for a while in that movie and it would be great to see a full length horror movie based on those two twisted concepts you know oh, it, those, those were great i like it it's it's if it seems like we're being vague it's because we don't want to ruin the movie for you because you really that it's it's really fun to watch this one and not know exactly yeah. what's going to happen um but i love that one i thought that the dark humor and the, the the surprise shocking stuff was so well done and you know like as soon as you think that characters are done for they find a real creative way to bring it bring them back in and it was the the dialogue was hilarious it was some of the it, it was um like instead of body horror it was like body horror comedy in the vein of like bad taste be, yeah. from peter jackson like there was moments in that with people yeah. just squishing their own brains <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the, the and it's like the first it starts off with a banger with the first story where yeah you 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 think one thing's going with the one you think the story's going one way and then by the end of that segment it just goes whoosh right into the other 180 degrees yeah. and i was so pleasantly surprised by that because i was like wait a minute what what's going on why are they doing this why are they you know getting up you know yeah and, yeah and oh, then, was, i loved that i was laughing yeah. i was smiling through the whole movie it was yeah. it was fun it was a lot it was, of fun. It, so yeah, it's a, it's a highly recommended one, guys. Uh, if you haven't seen it by now and you made it to the end of this uh, this bits and chunks episode, uh, make sure you do check that movie out. Stream it That's on Shutter. Right. Stream it, get it. We and Shutter pays us nothing, by the way. We pay Shutter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, Shutter, <laughs> for letting us pay you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you want to give us a free uh, account, I'll take it. But. Uh, but okay, yeah, I guess that's it for this episode of Bits and Chunks. Um, I don't think we really have anything else on our plate as far as movie-wise. That um, uh, I know we've been throwing ideas back and forth to each other. Yeah, um, I believe. Uh, well, I don't know if we have anything that you want to announce yet, but you're. Um, I think you're working on something special. You're cooking. You can decide if you want to mention it or not. Yeah, yeah, I'm just working on a uh, uh, Clay. If, if by now you you know that uh, Clay did his retrospective on Nightbreed, which is fucking excellent, and uh, the, it was highly successful. And we're I was just we're we're very proud of it. We put to, uh, Clay put a shitload of work into that. And, well, so uh, did you. So yeah. Uh, that yeah, we both. It was a great collaboration, and uh, we're going to do a similar collaboration on another movie coming up. But uh, I will be doing the voiceover stuff. And uh, yeah, so I'm not going to reveal what it is just yet, but uh, cool. hopefully, hopefully I'll get it done this uh, this month. <laughs> it, it'll happen. Lie. It'll happen when it happens. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we're just uh, we try to put these out when we can. You know, like we're uh, you know we're still very enthusiastic about it, but sometimes it takes a little time. So you know, yeah. we'll we'll get around to another one soon. I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, so I guess that's about it. So this is Cinematic Suffering, and I'm Jason. I'm Clay. 
Thank you all. Okay, we remember we, we got to have a bad outro here. What's our bad outro um, going to be this time? Watch uh, movies. Uh, don't watch people. Watch uh, movies. <laughs> to watch <laughs> watch people watch movies. Don't. Oh no, I what? have that all backwards, don't I? Well, you know, it doesn't even matter because it was so it, bad. Even if you yeah. got it right, it's it's wrong. So. <laughs> Okay, well, let's stick with that one, whatever it was. <laughs> we'll come up with something on the next episode. We probably, yeah, I I'll, promise you guys. I'll write it. I'll get writing right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that is it. Uh, take care, and we'll talk at you later. Later on. Bye.